Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Legends of 40k. I thought I'd switch gears a little bit here and talk about Space Marines. No, I'm joking. Uh, obviously, I've been doing that a while. Uh, it's another Space Marine character, but this Space Marine character is a squad upgrade special character. Um, and that's why I'm switching gears a little bit here. Prior to this, I was talking about HQ special characters. Um, essentially, independent characters. And... Uh, what we have here is an example of a special character who, first off, he must take the squad in which he's an upgrade for, and then you pay his point cost, and he replaces a model in that squad with himself. Uh, <coughs> squad upgrade characters seem to be something that um, existed in, in the older days. 40k kind of petered out of favor, it looked like, and then has since made a resurgence. I think the first of the new style of codex to use the 5th edition style um, codex, you know, with the way they're composed now. I think the first uh, army to re essentially bring them back, um, or just keep them, is the the Orc Codex. The Orc Codex kept, I think, um, some of them. And since then, we've been seeing the uh, between the Guard Codex, the Space Ring Codex, the uh, Space Wolf Codex, the um, Blood, the Blood Angel Codex, in, in a way. Oh well, yeah, and um, uh, it just seems to be a trend again. I'm not complaining; it's, it makes things interesting. So anyway, enough of that little ramble aside. Uh, we're looking at. Scout Sergeant Teleon, who has a first name, because, uh, you know, why not? He's Torias Teleon. Uh, he leads a scout squad, so he would replace the sergeant of a scout squad. So remember, first you gotta buy the scout squad. <clears throat> and Sergeant Teleon is 50 points for himself, and one scout squad in the army may replace its scout sergeant with Sergeant Teleon. He's got weapon skill of 5, blister skill of 6, strength of 4, toughness of 4, 1 wound, initiative 4, 2 attacks, leadership 9, 4 plus save. He's infantry, he's got scout armor, bolt pistol, frag and crack grenade, stalker, pattern bolt gun, he has a bunch of special rules. He has the special rules of being a scout and a space marine, and uh, his own special rules. So, well not his own, he has a couple of his own that are unique to him, but also just rules tacked on to his profile. So he has and they shall know no fear. Um, <coughs> combat tactics, infiltrate, move through cover, scouts, acute senses, eye of vengeance, voice of experience, and stealth. <coughs> so let's look at his unique stuff. Eye of vengeance. Wounds caused by Teleon's shooting attacks are allocated um, by his controlling player rather than the opposing player. Kind of like a Vindicare. Right, there's, uh, in fact, just like a Vindicare. Voice of Experience. Talion um, can choose not to make a shooting attack, and if he does not make a shooting attack, one friendly model in his squad can use his blister skill of 6. But he must declare using this ability before either Talion or the beneficiary um, fire any shots. So declare before you shoot with the squad, basically. You're going to do that. <clears throat> and as far as Stalker pattern bulk gun goes. It's 36 inches, strength 4, AP5, heavy 2, rending penny. <clears throat> so, pretty pretty beefy scout sergeant here. Um, before I go into my normal bit of uh, Legends 40k, where I talk about the model if they have one, and then what I think of the entry, and then how I would use them. Before I go into that, I want to say um, I feel that Talion and um, Sergeant Beston or Sergeant Lucas Beston of the Imperial Guard Codex are probably two. I think Gunnery Sergeant Harker, I guess, to a certain extent. So I guess the trio there, I feel um, not the best as far as being the best of uh, squad upgrade characters, but I think they fit the bill of what they should be the best. Uh, the Orc squad upgrade characters also fit in there well. To fit in with a very orky way, but um, like in my opinion, a, a squad special upgrade character for the most part. Now, 
with the orcs, you got like mini war boss type of things and captains and whatnot. I like Captain Badrock is kind of like a mini boss, and uh, so on and so forth. But for the most part, the squad upgrade character represents a stronger, in some sort of way, with experience or war gear or whatever version of what they replace. And I think, like Arjak, I think it's just a little bit too much and. Uh, I think Chapel and Marquez of the Blood Angels being a, a death company upgrade, um, while cool, I think is also a bit much in terms of what a squad upgrade character represents to me, but that's just my opinion. So anyways, on, onwards back to uh, Torias Talion. <clears throat> um, I think his model's cool. I really like his model. It has the Ultramarine iconography on it. But the hardest one to get off would be the shoulder pad one over here. You can't really see it of the, because of the white background. Uh, other than that, the other ones will be pretty easy to grind off if you were so inclined to use the model. Uh, I like the stalker pattern bolt gun. I do think the little hole right here, I'll put my finger right above my finger. I think if that was just gone and just smooth, and like the whole thing was kind of like this black part here, it would be a little bit cool looking. But that's just one minor aesthetic thing. Overall, I think a very nice looking special character scout model. His unit entry is fine. I think he, I think the rules he has uh, show you what a scout will be capable of as far as you read them in the novels when they occasionally show up and the fluff as, you know, the stealth guys, the, um, the stealthy space marines, so to speak. Uh, yes, they're initiates and they're new. But they can go in there, they can infiltrate, they can uh, sneak up and do all these sorts of things. And I think his rules kind of show that. Um, the Stalker Pattern Bolt Gun, I like it. It's basically a sniping bolt gun, which has existed in the Fuck with Space Marines. So, not a big problem there. I think it's cool. I would have preferred for it to have two modes of fire, standard bolt gun fire and the stalker pattern fire, only because it would make it more maneuverable, but that's just me being, you know, wanting more of a good thing. So how would I use Talion? Well, really, you, you attach him, well, you're not attached, you upgrade a squad of scouts to have him. Uh, I personally, because he's meant to be more of a shooting special character, would upgrade a squad of sniping scouts. Like I wouldn't put him in a close combat oriented uh, scout squad. At the very least, bolters. But I would probably have him in, in a in a sniper squad. With um, I like to put the snipers with a missile launcher, but the hellfire rounds that are, are shells that the uh, heavy bolter can fire from the scout squad may make the heavy bolter be a little more of an attractive option, especially considering everything's at the same range at that point. Um, but I like this missile launcher. I think it makes the squad a little bit more multi-purpose and not so much singularly to infantry. Um, I really like his Eye of Vengeance rule. It lets him pretty much be a Vindicare. I really like that rule. It can really help with uh, dealing with squads. In fact, you can turn that scout squad into essentially just a weakening squad. Um, have have the squad fire into a squad. Uh, I would have Talion on fire, except for a few occasions, and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, for example, in a space marine squad, a ten man space marine or a chaos space marine squad, even you're gonna have the aspiring champion slash sergeant. You're gonna have the special weapon guy, and probably a heavy weapon guy, maybe, if depending if it's in the combat squad or not. Um, with to go more of the chaos route, you're gonna have the aspiring champion. You're going to have the special weapon guy, maybe a heavy weapon guy, um, and possibly an icon guy. So if they have icon of Chaos Glory, or if they have icon of Nurgle, or any of the icons really, you can fire with the scout squad, hopefully do some wounds so that they have to, to, take, to pick off a guy or two. And when Talion does his wounds, if they're red, that's great. If not, you can alloc allocate it to icon and sparring champion, or icon and the special weapon guy. Um, and that's pretty cool. So, that can really help you weaken squads without necessarily dropping the numbers a lot. And then you can move on to the next shooting phase to another squad, or focus firing on that same squad. Um, I would say if you really want to make him anti-infantry with the squad, 
uh, take this heavy bolt with them with the hellfire shells you can fire. Really good to the horde. Um, other than that, I would say missile launchers is a very good option. Now, when would you use his, uh, you know, his ability to grant his ballistic skill to somebody in his squad? Um, well, me personally, how I would do it with the missile launcher, I'll go through with both. With the heavy bolter, I would do it um, if the number of wounds mattered more than allocating a wound. So, like, if the squad was didn't have anything special in it, it was just like a homework on squad. And they were packed tightly together. And I really want to make sure I didn't scatter away. I want to get the most wounds possible in that squad. Then I don't have them direct the Hellfire shell round. Um, or even direct that the heavy bolter in general. So that's how I do it with the uh, with the heavy bolter. More so of a number of wounds matter more so than having two really precise wounds potentially. With the missile launcher, if the enemy is at extreme range, meaning at the missile launcher's extreme range, it's going to be out of range of his bolt gun anyway, and it's going to be out of range of your sniper rifles usually. Until it gets within range of both his and the sniper rifles range because they're the same. So. In that case, if I know that he's going to be out of range, or, ha or I have a pretty good authority he's going to be out of range, then I would um, have him direct the missile launcher so its shot will hit. I'll have a very high chance of hitting. I also do that if you're, if you're shooting into vehicles. Uh, let's say the, the best target of opportunity is a transport. Instead of relying on the rending from his weapon, I would direct the missile launcher to hit it. <coughs> And um, that's really it that I do for directing, unless I really want, again, that blast template from the frag missile, or for really, really um, hinging on the strength 8 AP3 crack missile hitting its target. Then I would do it. But for the most part, I think its Eye of Vengeance r uh, rule is a little bit better, provided the situation has, uh, allows for him to use it, meaning you got something different in that squad. If it's a homogeneous squad, uh, yay, I guess, uh, SAT word there, but anyway, if, uh, if it's a squad of nothing but horror guns, for example, then maybe him directing something else that can do more shots or cause more wounds because the blast template will be better. But, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, as far as utilizing the special rules to infiltrate and whatnot, it's up to you what you would do. He is more of a static shooter because of the heavy weapon rule for his weapon and, this, and the, um, the sniper weapons and whatnot. So, I would suggest get him in cover early if he's not in cover already, or infiltrate him into cover. And then maybe do, that, maybe do a movement just to get him into a good field of fire if he's not there already. But other than that, that's what I would do for a uh, Skull Sergeant Talion. I know people aren't a big fan of special characters, um, some people really aren't. I feel the squad upgrade special characters for the most part, um, to be, I think, people aren't a fan of special characters are more tolerant of the squad upgrade special characters, not that they have a choice these days anymore. Not that special characters, you know, ruin the game, I don't think they do, that's, that's a discussion for a different time, and I'm almost sorry I brought it up in that little moment. But, what I was saying is, I don't feel that the squad upgrade characters really tip the balance anyway. That's people think HQ special characters sometimes do. So, um, yeah, I think he turns the scout squad uh, from being already good to being pretty decent just because of his, his presence there and him, him using his own fire or his use other special rules. So that's pretty much it. Um, on a random note, uh, I think it would be pretty cool if some Space Marines Codex has 10th Company, which is Scout Company, the captain as a special character. I think that would be pretty cool. But anyway, that's pretty much it. And until next time, take it easy.